Blake, when we get into the lines, I think this should just all be the effects, don't you? Is that what you want in there? Yes. Here we go. Hines is another one of those artists that always comes up with something fresh and unique and different. He's a, you know, a brilliant composer who has these wonderful melodies in his head. You look at the Pirates theme, which you hear everywhere now. And for the third one, he created a whole bunch of new themes. Play the downbeat of 180. Hans has developed new themes for each of the subsequent films. Some of those themes carry into the third film that were developed for Pirates 2. There are lots of brand new themes. I sat down and wrote over an hour's worth of new tunes. You know, it's, it's the third one, so we want to do a really good job, and we have all these ideas that we've been talking about for, what, three years or so. It could Abstract. be sweet and synthetically with a, yeah. you know, a, a, yeah. a detuned piano. Yeah. Right. One, you know, the bow. Yeah. There's a far more eclectic sort of um, landscape to the movie. I think that's part of the strength of these movies, that we keep showing you worlds that you've never quite seen before and we give you sounds that you've never heard before. OK, this part of our meeting is come up with ideas about other instruments. Since I already said things like banjo, it should open it up to that anything stupid you say will be hailed as a masterpiece. I mean, don't be shy. I just think we can take it a lot further than the last movie. On this one, I'm far more active with using instruments that aren't part of the orchestra. So it does feel more like a journey, like you're truly going to the end of the world and beyond. This next thing is like the big theme. For me. <laughs> okay. The love theme? The, well, it's actually the... It's just the, the theme of the whole movie. Yeah. So, uh, a world premiere, as it were. One of the things I think which is different in this movie that we found a theme that binds the movie together, that takes you on this journey. At the same time, I think all journeys are inherently romantic. And so, yes, I am using it for, I'm using it as a love theme. If you ever analyze it, you know, there's a, like a twist of the Johnny theme in it, which is counter-imposed against the, the main notes of all the other themes tumbling down into hell, da 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 By the time I put this in front of the orchestra, all I'm worried about is this, that it's unplayable or it'll sound like nothing that I imagined in my head. And so, it's really them that remind me, you know, after they've done a take where I was just holding my breath, you know, hoping my heart won't stop, hope there weren't any horrible accidents going to happen out there, uh, that I can hear them having enjoyed it. I can go, oh, okay, I've written something that they actually can get their teeth into, and it elevates, it elevates it straight away because they can find a, some sort of an emotional connection with it. That's why I love working with musicians, because that's what they do. They, they give you the gift of their heart. Yeah, 25. Is that uh, well, you said to play out? We can do that. Da, 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 da. You could just let it sing more the whole thing. It's wonderful to watch him when he has you know 80 musicians and how he talks to each individual violinist to tell him exactly the pitch and the tone and the feeling that he wants. And then you add in the editors to a director who is as brilliant as Gore Verbinski. It makes it all kind of come together. I actually was like, where is the death toll? Right. Because we had talked about that. Because it's so low. Yeah. And it's I was like, so oh, it's there. But it, you know, right. I, I know I'm searching for it. 